Today I'm going to be showing you how to back up your DVDs or even your VHS or Blu-rays and how to upscale them so that they look good on a modern TV. Stay tuned. It doesn't just have to be DVDs, it could be Blu-rays, it could be VHS tape, basically any kind of media that you have and you want to back it up to a digital format, I'm going to show you how to do that today. So in today's example, I'm going to be backing up this DVD collection that I pulled out of the closet. And the reason why I chose this is, um, well, to be perfectly honest, I have no idea where it comes from. So more than likely, I'm not going to get copywritten if I show some you know, examples of this. Obviously you need to have a computer that has a DVD player or a DVD drive in it of some kind. And if you have a computer that has a Blu-ray reader in it, then you can also use this exact same method to rip your Blu-rays as well. Ripping is what is called whenever you take data from a disc and put it onto a computer. It is called ripping it. So you are ripping a movie onto a computer and there's a software that we're going to be using that is completely free and it's by far the best program I have ever found to take DVDs, Blu-rays and put them in a digital format. It is fantastic. It's called Make MKV. It is currently it is currently in the beta version and while it is in the beta version you can actually obtain it here and they have a free key available right here so all you have to do is google make mkv key and it'll come up with this and it gets updated every month or so and I've seen this program, I've used it for years, and it's been in beta for years. Like, quite literally, it says right here, 2010, when it was released in beta, and it's still in beta, so I don't think it's ever going to get out of beta. However, if you decide that you love the program, like, you just absolutely love the program, you want to keep using it, and you want to support the creators, which I highly su suggest you do, it's only $50 for the full program. But the beta version is the full program. So if you don't want to pay them and support them, you can just use the beta version and just update the key every couple months. Make MKV recognizes the DVD in there already. We're going to click the DVD. It's going to run through the process and scan the disc, and it's going to tell us what is on there. And right now we see that it has eight chapters and it's 3.2 gigs and it has one audio track on there so we just want to have that selected if you want to go through and deselect different things because other movies may have different chapters or uh, extras on there you can go through and select and deselect as you need to we're just going to leave this selected as it is and then you're going to click this folder to change your drive and i'm going to change it to this location here so we have it changed to desktop ripped videos and if we open that up we see there's nothing in there and now you're all set all you have to do is click make mkv okay and as you can see here make mkv is finished and if we go back into our folder right here we can see that we now have the video it is titled title uh, t00 and that's just default naming. We open it up and run it. You're going to see that we actually have the video on here. So, uh, yeah, let's play some audio too with that so we can actually see it. Okay, so, um, yeah, apparently they're, they're in there too. Now, those of you who are familiar with ripping movies you might find that really simple to do. You also might have noticed that 3 gigs for a DVD is pretty big. And when you go and start ripping Blu-rays using Make MKV, it makes like identical copies. Like it's perfect. It's the identical copy of the disc, which is why it's amazing for making digital backups and digital copies of your physical materials. However, when you want to store them on a massive drive so you can actually use them it's a lot easier to play a movie that is less than three gigs in size let's say more like 700 megabytes so like a fifth of the size 
it's a lot easier to play a movie that's a fifth of the size than that. Which is where our next free product comes in. And this is called Handbrake. Handbrake has been free for years and it's going to probably continue to be free. It's right here. Website is going to be in the description down below with everything else. If you'd like to support the creators, they do have a little, I think it's like a slide bar where you can donate to them whenever you download the product. I think that's what it is. It's something like that. It's really simple, easy to use. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna show you how to use this and I'm also gonna teach you how to reduce the size of the videos. So once it opens up, all you have to do is click, drag and drop it. As you can see, the video is right here. And if you want to change your file location is right here, you can click browse and you can choose where you're going to export it to. You can also change the name of it right here as well. As far as the format, you can change the format to whatever you like. I personally prefer to keep it at MKV. It seems to play better on most devices, TVs, things like that. You can go into dimensions and change the dimensions, but we're gonna leave this alone because it's gonna be best at the original quality. Filters, don't worry about. Video, this is where you want to just decrease this down two notches. That's it. So from 22 to 23, just slide that down from 22 to 23. That's going to be enough that it's going to keep the quality pretty close to where it was, but yet it's going to reduce the size of the video drastically. If you go into audio, you, you can select which track that you want. So if you want it to be in a specific language, you can select that. Or if you want it to be surround sound, or if you don't want it to be of uh, stereo it's really up to you you also have the options for subtitles you can select whichever ones you want if you don't want to worry about any of this you can just leave it default alone and it'll just pick the default settings that are automatically on the disc anyway and then whenever you're ready all you have to do is hit start encoding and you're going to see a progress bar down at the bottom this is actually pretty good as far as how long it's going to take. It's a pretty good estimation. Okay, and it just now finished up. As you can see, we now have it in the background over here. I'm gonna close out of this, close out of Make MKV. We don't need that anymore. And I'm just gonna bring this up and play it so we can see. Kill, they make this. Down here with all the game. Do something to the Quality extent. is pretty There's good on it. Right. The real question is the size difference. So the original that we have here is 3.2 gigs. However, the one that just got converted is 634 megabytes. So a fourth of the size, I think. It's, it's really close to being a fourth of the size. Now, the next tool we're going to be using is our AI Enhancer. Now, this is completely optional. However, I do want to show you how you can upscale videos. The program we're going to be using is called VAC Labs Video Enhancer AI. So it's an artificial intelligence that goes through, looks at uh, different portions of the video, and then upscales them to whatever you want them to be, or just makes them a better resolution. Pretty much as well what it is. It is the only paid for application that we're going to have in this video. However, there's basically no free video enhancer that uses AI intelligence to be able to enhance the video quality that's free. It's just not available. So this option, while it is paid for, it's actually a really good option. However, there are some drawbacks to it, which I'll get to in a moment. This is the AI application, VAC Labs Video Enhancer AI. And all you have to do with this, it's either drag and drop a video into it or click browse. I already have my videos brought up here. This is the Lions Deluxe Box. And as you can see, I've already went through and edited a few and you can see the different file qualities and things like that. So I'm just gonna step you through the differences here and what they all entail. So we're just gonna go with the original one that we converted over that 634 megabytes. I'm gonna go ahead, drag this over here, drop it in. It's gonna analyze the video file and it's gonna come up with different options for us. Now, by default, this video enhancer does really good at enhancing video quality as long as it's not upscaling. 
In a minute, I'll get to how we can bypass that and make it work really good with upscaling. But for now, just know that if you do use the upscaling inside of the AI enhancer, it, it takes a bit of time. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when we drop a video in here, it's going to show you the opening of the video. You can actually adjust this slider right here and pick different sections if you want, and you can even trim it up. So let's say I want this section here and I want to start the trim and I want it to end, well, begin there and I want it to end. Let's just make it end right around. We don't need it very long, just a few minutes, like maybe right there. That's fine. And we're going to click the end. So right now it's a what, nine second, eight second section. Hit apply and there we have it. So this right here is the full video that we're going to have. And this is what I mean whenever I say it's going to take a while. With the presets, we can go up here and we can set the presets to whatever we want. We can upscale to HD resolution, 4K resolution, and it will automatically change everything down here for you. So the original quality it shows right here is a 64 by 480, which is a default DVD quality. It's above VHS quality, but it's not HD. It's just regular DVD quality or standard definition. If you want to upscale it to HD quality, which is an HD DVD, 1280 by 720, you can do that. We're just going to go with the preset high quality HD. We're going to leave it at the original 29 frames a second or 30 frames a second. And all the rest of this down here, it's just optional. You don't really have to do any of this. But something that you will want to look at, if you go up here to the menus option, go to settings, you can have it automatically use your video card or you can have it use your CPU. And for me, my CPU is much faster than my video card. I currently have 24 cores in my CPU that is threaded to 48 cores. So it runs much quicker under CPU settings consume the maximum amount of memory so you don't want to have anything else running in the background and just hit apply. So now that we have all that set up, all we have to do is hit start process and you're going to see a demonstration of the original on the left and the upscale on the right. And you can also see down here at the bottom how long this is going to take and how many frames per second that it is going to be converting over. So right now it looks like it's going to take us roughly nine minutes to convert this over from the original to the new. So as you can see, that is how you run the software. Now I'm going to show on the screen here some side-by-side -side comparisons of the software running at different settings to produce different scales as far as the video conversion is concerned. Where the Maasai graze their cattle, the grass is shorter. Any predator risks a confrontation with armed herdsmen. The lion sticks out. Not much chance of an ambush here. Hunting under cover of night makes more sense. As the sun goes down, life gets easier for the Serengeti's predators. Dusk diminishes to near complete darkness. This software actually works really great with cartoons. Like if it's an animated drawing or something like that, it works amazing. But the downside to this software is it takes a very long time to upscale. So the way around that is to use an application that we already covered, and that was Handbrake. Inside of the resolution upscaling, we want to deselect optimize size and select allow upscaling. And we want to change this to 2160. And now we have it being upscaled to 4K. So we need to change that. All right, now everything else that we have in here is stayed exactly the same. Video is at 23, we have 60 frames per second. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hit start encoding. 
And as you can see, we are now starting the encoding process and we are going to be upscaling. The video is going to take roughly 40 to, uh, let's see, about 50 minutes for it to complete. So I'm going to wait for the upscale to complete and then we'll go ahead and jump back in to AVC Labs video editor. Okay, so the video has just finished a recording, which I have brought up here. It is now in 4K as well as being 60 frames per second. So I'm going to go ahead, close out of this. We're going to go back into ABC Labs. And as you can see here, we already have the previous one brought up. We're going to delete this out, open this new video up in there. And we're going to just take this same section that we did before which is the trim. We're going to have that be at 36 or is it 38? It's going to be at 38. That's right. And it's going to end at 42 or 46. It's 46, right? Yeah, it's 46. 46. Okay. Now this is exactly the same settings we had before, except this time the input is already at 4K resolution and we have 60 frames per second. So this is actually a higher quality than what we had before with exactly the same settings that we had up here. We are going to change this to, uh, let's see, same output resolution and we are going to hit start process. Now, keep in mind, this is the same video at exactly the same parts. The only difference is it was previously upscaled to be at 4K and 60 frames per second. Now, I actually did quite a bit of testing with this application on several different machines just to make sure that I had the times pretty accurate on it. And just to be sure, I was able to calculate a time if you are upscaling from a standard DVD up to regular HD, which is 720, you are looking at roughly 120 seconds per hour. What I mean is it will roughly translate to you converting two minutes every hour. That is upscaling it from standard DVD resolution up to HD quality. Now, if you were to go to Ultra HD or high definition, which is 1920 by 1080, that's not 4K yet, you were looking at eight seconds per hour. That means that for every hour, you would be converting eight seconds of video. Now, that was running my benchmark test and that was across many different machines, including my really high end machines and some of my lower end machines. But that is allowing the AI software to do the upscale. If you let Handbrake do the upscaling instead of the AI software, that time is basically non-existent. Please know that whenever I tell you to use Handbrake to do the upscaling instead of AVC, by no means am I saying that AVC cannot do the upscaling. And in fact, theoretically, it should be able to do the upscaling better. But for my testing, and I'll show you on the screen right here, I couldn't really see a difference in quality when using an upscale for Handbrake as opposed to only using AVC. The quality is roughly the same, for an outcome that takes less time. For me personally, I would rather use Handbrake to upscale and use AVC to improve image quality. It just makes more sense since I'm using Handbrake anyway in my process to skip a step that will ultimately save me time. But that's up to you. If you would prefer a higher image quality, AVC can do all of that for you. It's just gonna take a little bit more time. So there you have it. That is how you can take DVDs and Blu-rays, convert them to digital, and then possibly upscale them or just shrink the file size down to be more compact. Thank you all so much. All of the links for all the programs that we have used today is linked down below in the description. Please let me know if this was helpful. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you're going to be using this project for. Thank you all so much and I hope this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all on our next video. 
which by the way, if you subscribe, you'll be able to see because there's some right there and there's some right there and you might have missed them. I mean, these are great content. You should really subscribe to the video.